What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer at Cash App, and today I'm going to show you how to create navigation rails in Figma. If you're not familiar with navigation rails or Google's material design system in general, I recommend going to their website where you can learn more about individual components and play with interactive prototypes in production. I've linked to that in the description, and if you wanna learn how to make other components with this system, I've made videos on how to do so on my channel. Looking at the anatomy of a rail component, it's fairly simple. You've got the container, which holds all of the components. You've got a floating action button, which is optional. You've got the individual destinations, you've got a text label, and you've got a divider. In one of the previous videos, we made a navigation drawer. You could almost think of navigation rails as a navigation drawer that's just been horizontally truncated to make better use of space. First thing that we'll do is create a frame. This is going to be 72 pixels by 72 pixels. We'll call this container, and within that we are going to add an icon. So I'm going to type the word circle here, and I'm going to change this to font awesome pro. I'm gonna take this icon, make sure that it's 20 pixels size, 24 pixel line height, and 0% letter spacing. And then I'm going to change the width of this to 24 pixels, and I will center that within this element. Let's change this to be a lighter gray. Call this container normal. We're also gonna make a version of this that's active. Let's just change this to be a file icon so that it's more clear what this is. We're going to make this that primary color and we're going to switch this to be solid. It's filled and we'll call this container active. So this is one way that you can do it, but another way that we could do this is we could add labels here. So I'm going to take both of these and I am going to add some text. So let's duplicate this. We're going to change this to SF Pro and we will change this weight to semi-bold, and we will change the size to 15, the line height to 20 pixels, and we'll set the width to 72. There will be four pixels of spacing between these elements, and then we'll have 12 pixels of vertical padding on either side. Let's do that here as well. That, we'll change this to that active purple. Then we're gonna take all of these, and we're gonna change the spacing to be 20 between each, and then I'm going to create a component set here, We'll call this destination container and the first property will be label. And then we've got another variant, which is active. And by default, that will be false. And so let's take both of these. It's active, which is false, but for these, it's true, right? Both, both of these do not have a label, so this is false. And then both of these do have a label, which is true. So if I take one of these now, I'm gonna change this. I can have a label, it can be active, it could be both. I can turn both of these things off. Now I'm going to put this all into place. Let's go ahead and create a new wireframe. We'll call this desktop. And then I am going to set the background to a light gray. And then I'm going to take this frame up here and I am going to give this eight pixels of spacing from the top. I'm gonna to zoom in a little bit. And then I will duplicate this, apply auto layout. And then let's change this to be eight pixels of top and bottom padding. And then we'll make this fill white and then I'm going to have this container and I'm going to scale it up so that it matches the height of the container itself and then let's take this whole frame and we're going to apply a stroke but that stroke will only be applied to the right side and we're going to use a very light gray here and you'll notice that you're not seeing it with these two containers so I'm actually going to go back to these and I'm going to remove the fill so it's transparent and I'm going to duplicate this four times so let's have this be a folder. We'll have this be star. We'll have this be, we'll have this be a clock. We'll have this one be a trash can. And this one we can change to an image. So if I take all of these components, I can add a label to them and let's call this files. This will be starred. This will be recent. This will be images and this will be trash. This text is feeling a little big to me, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change this to 14 pixels and I'm going to bring in the letter spacing a little bit and I am going to take one of these and make it the active one and that is it. So if I remove this bigger frame component, call this default, and then I'm going to make another version of this that has a floating action button. So let's go over here to my assets and I am going to go to floating action button. I'll click and drag this in. And then let's set this to be horizontally aligned. If you're wondering how to get this, you can duplicate the Figma file that I've linked in the description below. And then I am going to actually add a light shadow here. So let's go to plugins, smooth shadow. We'll add a light shadow here, apply that. And then let's take all of these and we will apply auto layout here. Then we're gonna make the space between elements eight pixels. We'll call this width fab. 
Then we're gonna make another version of this. This version, only the selected element will show text. So let's take all of these. We'll remove the label here. We'll say selected label, and then I'll go one more. And then we will call this compact. And I'm gonna take this and I'm going to remove the label and I am going to change the width of this to be 56 pixels. And then I'm gonna take all of these elements and I am going to change the size to be 56 by 56. And you'll notice that these are not fitting within the center here. And so I'm gonna take these elements and say center, 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 center. And then I'll take these ones and I will actually group these and I will change this to be centered centered and then this group will be centered as well horizontally and vertically so now if you look at this all of these fit perfectly within the layer so if you look at the desktop and tablet guidelines for material design these are the different type of navigational rails that they have within the system so i'm going to take all of these here and i'm going to create a component set and i'm going to call this navigation rail and then this property will be type and then what i can do is in the future if i want to create a navigation rail i can go to select a label i can go with fab or i can go to compact and then if i want to i can detach this and then i can easily duplicate or remove any of these items within the menu and that's it you now have a simple navigational rail component that you can use whenever you're designing for desktop or tablet products Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of navigational rails, how to use them, and how to make your own next time you're working on a design that uses material design systems. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.